Hello, I'm Sally Hodgson. I am Head of Client Success and Training at Wavenet Education. Hello there, I'm Karen Oliver and I'm a training consultant with Wavenet Education. We're going to talk to you today about some free AI tools that come with Microsoft that are specifically aimed at educators. <laughs> There's so much going on in the world of AI at the moment, and we know for a fact that 45% of schools were using AI last year, which has gone up to 86% this year, which is a massive, massive jump. So where do you start and what tools are available for you? We know that teachers don't have very much time to prepare, to mark, to assess, all of those sorts of things. And there's been a study done, the Pew study um, in America, which just highlights this. And we know that this is a global problem. So we're going to have a look today at how AI can really help to reduce that burden and really get teachers back into doing the thing that they care about most, teaching. Educational institutions are moving fast into the world of AI, but there's two things holding them back. The preparedness of the educators, how do they know how to use AI tools correctly, and also having a strategy in place, which is really important for schools. So we know there's nothing that we can do to get more hours in the day, which we'd all love. So how do we get around that? Teachers can use AI to support, as Karen said, in their planning and other tools to get some hours back into their day. So let's have a look at what generative AI is. So let's dive into some of the vocabulary that surrounds AI to just to break down those barriers. So AI itself stands for artificial intelligence and it's been around for a really, really long time. It recognises patterns and carries out tasks. Things like those traffic navigation apps, fitness apps, robot vacuum cleaners, they all use AI. So it's something we're all quite familiar with. Generative AI, on the other hand, is different because it creates new content from patterns of data and that can include text, code, graphics or even audio. So examples of that would be something like the, the general pre-trained transformer or GPT, which we've all heard of, chatbots and text to image generators such as Microsoft Designer. There's so much that we can use as well in our everyday lives, isn't there, just to save time. That's the whole key of this is saving everybody time. But we recognise that it's quite a scary thing as well. Where do you start? What do you do? How are these tools embedded into your everyday life? And it's, it's a whole new era, isn't it, that we're moving into. Microsoft have a set of responsible AI principles that they use throughout all the AI that they have embedded within their tools. There is a whole framework that you can access, that you can look at the link for, and it has all the information that you need to know what they're doing to keep everybody safe, to keep the children safe, and to keep the educators safe. So when we're looking at all these tools, we are looking at them from an educator perspective. So these tools are for 18 and over. So everything that we're talking about today links back in to teachers and to SLT and the staff that are going to be using them. And these Microsoft Responsible AI principles cover things like fairness, reliability and safety, privacy and security, inclusiveness. And this was with an overarching idea of transparency and accountability to make sure that those things are really there at the very core of these products that are being created. So what can these products do for you? Other than saving you time, which we know we keep banging on about, but it is really, really <laughs> crucial. They can help with repetitive tasks. They can provide valuable feedback and insights into how your pupils are doing. They can also create engaging lesson plans and save time to focus your attention on the learners. Absolutely, and there's some really fantastic no-cost tools which are there ready for you to use within Microsoft already. So things like Microsoft Copilot. So this is your chat bot, which you can put lots of questions and requests into, and it will find that information for you. The wonderful Microsoft Learning Accelerators, which we're not going to be covering in this session, but we'll be covering it in a future session, won't we? Because they're indeed. absolutely fabulous. Minecraft Education has some great tools for opening up discussions with your pupils about this emerging world of AI and things that they might encounter in the future as they go into the world of work. GitHub Copilot is where you can put your questions about coding in. So if you want to ask something about Python, it will find the answers for you. Microsoft Teams for Education has some fabulous tools for educators to help with things like grading and assignment creation. And then we have Calm Mingo for teachers as well. And there's some wonderful tools on there which we'll have a look at to help you to open up all sorts of possibilities for your students which use AI. So let's have a good look at Minecraft. It's a great way to begin a discussion with your pupils about AI and building that digital literacy into your classroom. 
there are lots of fabulous videos and digital resources to help your pupils understand how AI works and what they need to be aware of as well. All those really important things we're trying to instill in our pupils as they go forward into the world of work. They future ready skills, aren't they? Future ready skills indeed. So let's have a look at Khan Mingo, which is a free tool for educators and helps them to take the burden out of the preparation and assignment setting and so much more. Whether you need to generate that quiz for a specific topic on year two that uses gamification as a reward every time they get a question right, or whether you want to offer your students real-time guidance on how to structure an essay, or maybe you need to quickly brush up on a tool um, for your own knowledge, something you're about to teach that you haven't taught for a little while. Khan Mingo has over 20 20 tools to support educators and their pupils. We've had a good old play with that as well, haven't we? We have. It's been really, really exciting to use. Really lovely. I'll tell you, one of the tools I really liked was where it helps you to brush up on your knowledge. As a teacher, you're, you're trying to understand so much knowledge so mm. quickly, especially if you've been somebody who's been out of the classroom for a little while. Mm. And, um, and you can have a conversation with the AI um, chat in there, and it will pose questions to you that your pupils might ask mm -hmm. so that you can kind of be prepared for that as well as actually sort of refreshing your own knowledge. Mm. It's really, really clever. It's really, really good. GitHub is a platform where developers can store and manage and collaborate on code. It's, it has an AI-powered tool that assists developers on suggesting code snippets, completing lines of code, and even generating entire functions based on the context of the project. It helps to speed up coding and provides quick suggestions and auto-completions. It improves productivity and it enhances learning, more importantly, especially for our teachers as they're kind of picking up lots of information um, and offers examples of solutions that can help developers learn new techniques. So if you're somebody who is teaching um, computing in schools and you're maybe doing something like Python and you don't know much about it, this can be a really fantastic tool to help you um, understand that and teach it to your pupils. And you can go in and you can find all sorts of lines of code already written in there, aren't you, for various different um, environments that you need to use it for. So that's brilliant. It's already there for you as well. Absolutely. Especially as often we're sort of finding the pupils who've been doing this outside of school maybe have a lot of knowledge and it's just brilliant for you to be able to sort of keep up with that and, uh, yeah. and apply it. It's hard to keep up, isn't it? It's <laughs> really hard. Common use cases for generative AI across higher education. You can use it for translation services. You can lesson plan. You can use it for administrations and for recruitments. You can use it for evaluation in research and medical purposes, diagnostic aids. There's so many uses for these AI platforms that are out there. It's just getting your head around it and having a look at what's there and researching it yourself, spending a little bit of time with these tools and having a really good play. You can't break them after all, can you? You, really you just need to really just immerse yourself in them. And the hardest point, I think, is thinking of something to do, to look up. So hopefully this will give you a little few insights into what can I use AI for? Where am I going to go with this? What is it going to do to improve my workload? So with that, we're going to have a look at Copilot. And Copilot is absolutely fantastic because you can put um, questions into there and you can it'll generate all sorts of information for you. Whether you want to um, make a piece of text less complicated or whether you want to make it more complicated, it does all sorts of really fantastic things. It's the art of prompting that we're going to look at, isn't absolutely it? Absolutely How is. do you start to prompt? So before we do that, we're going to have a look at how to access Copilot. So whether that's through the Microsoft Copilot platform itself, um, whether you have the app, which you can actually have on your PC mm -hmm. as well, um, with the Edge um, browser sidebar, um, and within Teams, is coming soon, I understand. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yes. I believe so. It'll be um, everywhere. You can't miss it. You won't be able to miss it. You're looking for that little rainbow symbol, mm -hmm. and you will know that you're in the safe hands of Copilot. So of course, the most important thing with AI is knowing what you need and how to ask for it. And we've got three really good steps for crafting prompts to help you get what you need out of AI. Number one, tell Copilot what you need, your goal. Yep, your goal. Number two, try and include an additional prompt element. So something like a context, um, a source or expectation. So if you're teaching year five, uh, you can ask for something that's appropriate for year five for that age group, for example. Keep the conversation going is point number three as well. So when you've got your, um, your information from the AI, keep it going. Ask another question. So keep going and deep dive until you and get it will really come up with, with questions, asking you a little bit more, what do you want to find out? It's trying to get Copilot almost in your head, thinking, 
who you are, what you're trying to ask. Obviously, it doesn't know. You have to tell it. You have to say, I am a year five teacher. I am looking to write a session plan on, and this is what I'm looking for. And you really need to tell it everything. And sometimes it will come up and it won't be quite right, will it? And you, you think, oh, that. that's not quite mm -hmm. right. Always check the information that comes out. But also, you can just add more information into that chat, can't you? As it goes through, you're having that same conversation, so just keep adding in more and more. That's not quite right. Actually, what I want to know is this, and just tell it more. The more information that you give to Copilot, the more you will get out what exactly you are looking for. And quite often, it's referred to as a bit of an assistant, isn't it? It's an assistant for your brain. So while it's you're coming up with these ideas, it's a copilot, <laughs> exactly. So while you're coming up with these ideas, and sometimes you want to use a sounding board just to kind of test it out, this is the place to do it. Absolutely, um, so, yeah. absolutely. And keep trying with it. If it doesn't come back the first time with exactly what you're looking for, keep putting more information in. If you are signed in as an education tenant, the information that you are putting into Copilot does not get used anywhere else. It does not get saved. It does not get put into any of your school um, institutional information. Nothing ever gets saved. It just goes again once you've deleted that. It doesn't get shared with anybody else. It doesn't get used to train any language AI models. No. Nothing like that at all. It's no. just it's purely secure. for you. Look for a little green symbol in the corner and it will say protected and that's what you know. If you just go on as a logged in as, as if you've got a Hotmail account or anything like that and you just go in, then that is used to train the AI. That that is used there to, to by anybody that wants it. So that is not a secure place to be sharing information or asking questions. Always log in as your education yeah. account. So what is the anatomy of a good prompt? So we, we've got to think about what the response that we want out of Copilot. We've got to think about that goal. We've got to think about the context. Why do you need it and who is involved? Think about the source. What information sources or samples could Copilot use? So you can use a website, for example, and ask it to pull out information from that. So we're going to have a look at how to use Copilot to really prompt it to get what you want out of it. So I've got a statement here that I'm going to put in. And I've just sort of said, please write me five I can statements for year five about fractions. And please include the national curriculum standards as an I can statement. So which are your goal? Which is which is have you put in there as the goal? So I want to have the I can statements. That's my goal. And your context? My context is that it's for year five and about fractions. And what's your source that you're my, using? My source is the National Curriculum Standards. Okay. So it can pull all that information out and put those things into there rather than me having to trawl through the National Curriculum and work out what I want to say for my I can statements. OK, and your expectations? My expectations, I'm hoping it's going to come up with a nice bullet pointed list, <laughs> fingers crossed, of statements that I can use straight away with my pupils. Maybe they'll be tweaking, we'll see. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to hit the little arrow and here we go. So it's now searching the web, it's finding the national curriculum um, statements and it has put some I can statements there for my pupils. So how much time do you think that you would spend trying to trawl through, trying to find that? And then you can put that statement in. It's given you everything you wanted. We've hit the four different things of the anatomy that we're looking for. And it's just done it for you in seconds. In seconds. It would have taken quite a long time to do that beforehand. Even if I thought, even if I did know <laughs> the National Curriculum Standards for Year 5, it would have still been taking me that time to find that. Of course, I've still got to go through and check it because this Absolutely. is the really, really critical thing. Um, you've got to really check through to make sure that, um, that you agree with what's, what's been said there and also to check it as well. Yeah. With, so we still um, need humans. It's a good news. We still need to be here. We still need to make sure that everything is correct because it can come up with some sort of false positives of different information and you think that's really not right. So you need to know your basics of everything that's going on. Always, always check before you use it. Don't just send it out there. Double, double check everything that's in there that is correct. Yeah, so I always say humans are in the middle of all of this technology. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> So thinking ahead to what institutions can do if you do want to have co-pilot within your school or your mat, have a think about the goals and what you expect your staff to be using these these tools for. Think about what departments you're gonna, are you gonna roll this out in one go? Are you gonna prioritize one department over another? How are you gonna get best use case out of this? And write a strategy. Make sure you've got a policy in place that the teachers understand what you're gonna be using this for, how it's gonna be used, and training. Training is always important. Absolutely. I mean, this is obviously what we love doing. Make sure that people actually understand how to use Copilot and that that is the tool that you are going to be using as your choice tool for your in your policy for your school rather than having teachers go off and use this wonderful stuff 
but there's so many different things out there that could be used. Copilot is safe. Copilot is in your tenant. It's in your education tenant. It's there. It's really, really used for to, to know that that is safe and being used for the best possible purposes. So you can talk to people like company we work for. We work for WaveNet. You can talk to us. We are a partner with Microsoft and we can help you write strategies. We can help you with all these different things. You're not on your own out there. We can help you with training. There's so many different people out there that can help you and support you in this. You can get Copilot to write you a basic strategy or a basic policy and then go through it, discuss it, make sure that it's tailored to you and your needs in your school. Thank you for joining us today, looking at free AI tools from Microsoft. Have a look out for the other Bet Tech User Labs that are out there. There's so much information and it's really, really short little videos and hopefully we'll be back seeing you soon doing more.